So hey guys, um, Mark and Aaron here from Knox. Uh, back again, reviewing another KTM today. Uh, this is the very, very exciting 790 Duke, their middleweight naked bike. Uh, we've had it for what, a couple of weeks couple now? A couple of weeks. Um, I've not been lucky enough to ride it all that time. Uh, Aaron, you, you've been... Uh, you've I've been, put a few more miles on it. Yeah, but I've had the last couple of days with it and I've got to say, it's, um, it's a pretty fun bike. What do, you, what do you think? I absolutely love it. <laughs> Honestly, I absolutely love this bike. And I'll probably handle uh, two things. Firstly, um, it could be said that you know, almost every bike that we review on the Knox channel, we end up saying that we really like or we're a fan or whatever. But, you know, actually about this channel, you know, we've got no tie-ups with any other manufacturers. This is not how we monetize. I mean, we monetize by selling products at the end of the day. Sure. Um, so anything that we choose to do is, is our own choice. Um, and, you know, I don't review, or we don't want to review anything that we don't like because it's just negativity. And that's why we haven't reviewed certain models. The second thing I should address is why the hell are we at an airfield? Good question. Good question. <laughs> right. Well, look, it's my idea that I think this bike is an absolute bag of fun, yeah. basically. And there's probably just stuff that you can do on uh, an airstrip that you can't do on the road. And hopefully we're, we're going to show you some of the bits Let's not, let's not give away all the secrets. Exactly. Videos to follow, troops. But anyway, I absolutely love the bike. I think it is so much fun. It is. It's absolutely. You'd agree, wouldn't you? I've got to be honest. Um, I've had a, a genuine interest in this bike since we first saw it. Uh, well, I, I can't remember exactly when we saw the concept bike that KTM came up with, but we were talking about this bike in, I want to say 2017 yeah. at, at, the at the NEC, NEC. At, the, at the bike show. And uh, back then I, I thought, crikey, that is, that is a serious bit of kit. Um, lots of reasons why. Mm. Um, primarily, obviously, the concept bike. And in fairness, I think we probably want to touch on the styling. It is obviously changed from that original concept. There's no center exhaust. Obviously, you've got to house the, the lights, you've got to house the number plate. So it's not quite as scalpel sharp as, as the original concept, but it, it's not a million miles away. So, you know, the first thing I saw was obviously the way that the bike looks. Then, of course, there's the price. So I think as, I, as it stands right eight now, half thousand. it's just over that, actually. I think thousand. they're retailing it now, 8799 okay. So the other thing, of course, about this, which makes it really interesting, is the dry weight. So at 169 kilos. That's light. But actually, even though where it sits brake horsepower-wise in this, in this sector, um, it goes like billio, this bike, doesn't it? It, it is, really does. Yeah, so, so it goes like billio. It is a hooligan bike, isn't it? A and, total hooligan bike, yeah. and, and the interesting thing about it is that kind of on paper, you talk about the power, the torque, you, you, it shouldn't really be as, as kind of crazy as it is when you ride it. But of course, the, the, the really interesting thing is that the, the performance is fantastic, but it's immediately the minute you get on it you're instantly at home aren't you yeah yeah i mean we have been i mean I've, hooning is probably a fair word to use isn't it we've been hooning around today yeah again we've been taking some different shots videos images and i, I have been enjoying myself well it, instant, instantly you were really confident on it Mark. yeah yeah, yeah no. and, and I think that's probably a blend of all those specifications all together. You know, obviously, yes, you've said 169 kilos dry right. weight, which yeah. is really light. Yes. Um, it's got really nice power that's dead accessible. It's just like, as soon as you open that throttle, crack, and, 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 it, and it's there. I mean, actually, for me, you know, I, I can't do wheelies, and I probably shouldn't be doing it on a press bike, but I, I've popped my first ever wheelie on this bike, you know, because it just in, it instills that confidence in you. It is a proper hoot, and if you're looking to have fun on a motorbike, yeah. I couldn't honestly recommend uh, a more fun and engaging bike to ride. So we talk about the engine and its power. It, it really is the centerpiece of this machine. Yeah. It's got loads of character. It makes a brilliant noise. It does. Pops and bangs on the overrun. And, and, and again, you know, the, the way they've set that motor up, so the crankshaft position, the uh, the um, injection timing, I think, the way they, the way they it's make clever. the characteristics of the motor mean it feels quite a lot and makes a noise like a, a V-twin. 
In terms of engine characteristics, I mean, it's just so much fun. I mean, way more engaging than my bike. I mean, obviously, I've got a, a GSX-R 750, and, you know, in those short straights, it's just, the power's instant. It's accessible, yeah. isn't it? That's oh, yeah, thing. And you're banging it up, that quick shifter. Yeah. It's so engaging, so much fun. Uh, to, 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 to use. To I, ride. I think that, 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 that sort of encapsulates what I enjoy about this bike the most. Anytime you ride it, it mm. makes that, that kind of point, you know, you're going from X to Y, yeah. really good fun. And I know we were talking about the horsepower and how that stands up. And hopefully that might lead you into talking a little bit about how it compares against other motorcycles. Well, sure, and actually, that's one of the other reasons why we, uh, we, well, why we ended up coming here because having ridden it quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, and it does feel so instantly fast. I mean, it had me thinking, crikey, uh, is this bike faster than the GSX R750, <laughs> or is it? You know, how would that compare? It's quite an interesting thing to me because it literally, you know, it's very different power delivery, and, yes. it's, and it's just wallop, you know. Yes. Um, so anyway, um, that's exactly what we did. So now we're going to show you uh, our strip uh, race between the, you know, between my bike and this bike, and let's see how we get on. So now we have the drag race. On the left, I've got the 790 Duke. On the right, we've got my benchmark of fast, which is my Jixxer 750. Let's get on with it, lads. Three, two, one, go! So I hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> we, we, did. we definitely enjoyed yeah. it. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, uh, I was behind the camera. We had Jeff uh, riding, actually both bikes, I think they both had a go. So um, Jeff, who's our founder and ex-racer, was riding, I think, the GSXR. Yeah. You were yeah. riding this mainly. Yes. Were you surprised with the results? Um, I, d I don't think I was necessarily as surprised as you were. I, I guess, you know, when you look at the, 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 the numbers on paper, the Jixa should win, and it did. Yeah, it did, um, yeah. What was quite interesting was, of course, you've got to get a good launch, and with the KTM, with the launch control, every time we stood up against the start line and went for it, I had the jump, I got the jump. Every getting time. The, yeah, and get, you know, obviously it is a more difficult balance to get the power down on the GSXR. So uh, up to about, say, 50 miles an hour, this thing was right there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely right there. Of course, with a quick shifter, Bam, not, through if, the gears. If not in front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> there was, and there was like one race. I think we maybe did five or six runs just to make sure. Because I think even when Jeff crossed the finishing line first on the first occasion, he was a bit shocked to see me not that far behind. So at the end of the strip, and it wasn't measured, but on the GSXR we got up to 120 mile an hour. On this we were up to I've... about 105. Somewhere between 105 and 110. It okay. would very much depend on how, how good my gear changes were, whether yeah. or not I was ringing it just to the right point and then changing. On a couple of occasions, I was going right into the limiter because I was desperately trying to run and hide from the gs <laughs> that was coming up behind me very quickly indeed. But mm. I think, you know, ultimately, um, I, I, as we've spoken about before, in the real world, all the performance that this bike offers you is in a really sort of sensible rev range. You get to 3,000 RPM, up to sort of 8, 9, and it, it, it just delivers everything it has almost instantly. So yeah, it's it brilliant does. in that respect. Whereas, of course, with a, with a sport bike, with an inline four like yours is, you have got to let the bike really rev out. But once it gets up there, it There's comes it, past me like a missile. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's some. It's a know. train in it. Well, I and, mean, and, you know, actually, that, that, and that is so interesting. That's probably why this fit felt so quick, yeah. is because you're just in the power band all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Whereas the Jixi, yeah, you're winding it on. I mean, you know, 70, 80 mile an hour first gear, uh, second gear, 120 you can do. See, so, you know, there's two gears up, up, up yeah, to yeah, that front. Yeah, for the and distance we're travel. You know, what are we in, fourth? Uh, yeah, fourth, I was in fourth, at, fourth at the red line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, to totally different power delivery. Um, I was surprised that the Jigs have won, you know, 
pretty much every uh, yeah. race. I, I wasn't as surprised okay. as you. I think, I think you, uh, and, and I alluded to this before, on paper, if you look at the numbers, actually what's really interesting about that comparison is the dry weights are very, very similar. So 169, and I, th I think we were talking about the 160 to 170-ish, yeah. but of course the, the GSSR has got another 50-ish 50, 50 horsepower. And once it's able to put that horsepower down the road, then... You know, power to weight ratio would suggest that the GSXR should win, and in the end, that's exactly what it did. But it's a huge amount of fun and really interesting to see different configurations of engines going up against each other and how they put that power on the road. So, look, in line with the uh, nature of this bike, um, we've been riding it pretty hard, and uh, we've been wearing the gear to match. Um, I've been wearing the uh, Urban Pro shirt, uh, which is brand new for us. Been flying up and down this airfield on it all day. The airflow on this product is just unbelievable. For the type of day we've had, it's been incredible. Um, yet, at the same time, knowing that you've got that CE approved protection there is, is, is really great. Um, you know, again, when it's got a little bit cooler, just put the uh, Ford leather jacket on over the top. It's been fantastic. Um, the other thing I've been wearing is a brand new Richmond Mark II uh, jeans, and I'm a real instant fan of this. Um, you know, it's got that right stretch. You take the armor out, it just feels like a regular pair of jeans. Been superb. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say snap, but I've been pretty much wearing the same stuff. I mean, we've been, we've been doing triple digit speeds out there today, yeah. haven't we? And I've had the Urbane Pro on. I've had my Richmond Mark IIs. Um, we've been really fortunate with the weather. It's been absolutely beautiful today, hasn't it? The sun's been out all day. Little bit of breeze, but nothing too much. Um, and I've been able to get away with just wearing my Urbane Pro, knowing it's fully protected and it's got your Michael Lock armor in there. Yeah. Pair of Richmond jeans and a boots and away you go. Fantastic. So look, we're gonna put all of the links in the description for all the gear that we've been wearing. Um, please go and check that out. We want to talk a little bit about the sort of technical aspects of the bike. Sure. Um, some of the key pointers, 14 litre tank. And um, I guess, that, I mean, I, I've got very little to say about this bike, which is yeah. in any way kind of negative but I, I think I probably would talk about the fuel gauge again I, I do think it you can be a little bit accurate. on the misleading side I mean okay. before we went out this morning I, I, I brimmed the tank and it, it does t tend to kind of just fluctuate quite a lot I mean it, obviously it will depend on how you're riding the bike if you're giving it a lot of beans and then you're cruising it can alter that sort of mm. level of MPG that you're doing but it's kind of an interesting one anyway so 14 litre tank uh, 169 kilos dry uh, horsepower 103, I Min think, three. and then you've got 87 newton meters of torque. Mm. Um, we'll come back to the power in a second, but also there's lots and lots of talk about the suspension on this bike, isn't it? You've got WP, WP. but it is non-adjustable suspension, and and I, I think it, it, it differs from uh, from m multiple reviews, one review to the next in terms of how people feel about it. You know, I am not a track monkey. You know, I, I, honestly, that's just not kind of the thing that I, I'm doing when I ride my bike. And I've got to say, at no point did I think, oh, there's too much bounce, there's not enough control, the ride's not plush enough. You know, I, it worked really well for me. I think, although it is non-adjustable, KTM have done a fantastic job of setting the bike up really, really well. So that it works almost in, it's particularly on the road, in almost any environment, depending, regardless of how spirited your riding is. Mm, mm, um, mm. I think that's an important point. But yeah, so WP suspension. Well, could, I'll just comment very quickly on the suspension actually because obviously I ride a sports bike yeah. and um, you know certainly with regards to the name of the scalpel I was kind of expecting you know a, a feel very similar to the to, to, to my to, bike yeah. because obviously it's a sports bike it is definitely softer yes um, uh, and uh, and it is and I would tend to just like it just ever so slightly uh, yeah. harder or at least or at least be adjustable I think that would be a really great upgrade if you could if you could you know perhaps buy a um, you know 790 Duke R or, or well there, I mean there is talk like about that. that there is talk about there being I mean there generally is when you look at um, I mean almost this is the love child of the 390 and the 1290 and when you yes. look at the the, the the Super Duke there is an R variant of that you know it comes with upgraded everything and mm. you can have a kind of sharper instrument if you want to I think as a launch bike, I, I'm not sure necessarily that I think it's too soft. No. I think it works for everyday road use. And yes. I think that's... Oh, yeah. And, and, and it, you and, know, and, it's, it's very much a personal taste thing again, isn't know, it? Don't get me wrong. I've, I haven't took it to its max either. You no. know, uh, I'm not that type of rider. And obviously, we're on the roads as well. Um, yeah, sure. You know, it, and it, it, it is good. Don't hear me wrong. But it's, it's perhaps not quite as scalpel as I ex kind of expect right, okay. it from, from the, you know. Interesting point. We've talked about how well this bike goes. What about how well it stops? 
Well, the brakes, I think the brakes are pretty good, actually, Mark. I mean, they're not the strongest that I've ever experienced, um, you know, uh, but they are good. Um, they are good, and they do stop. There's plenty of power. Um, yeah, I think they're, 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 they're pretty good, Mark. No, no complaints, really. No, I, I would be inclined to agree, that although they're not, you know, some brand like Brembo, yeah. they do the job. And, of course, because the curb weight is so light, Actually, you're not hauling down in a massive amount of weight, even combined with the rider. So, sure. you know, for me, we've been we've been hammering them all day. I've not noticed any fade. The bre the, the the lever feel is good. I've been able to modulate how much brake I put in. It works really, really well. I'm, I'm super impressed with that as well. Electronics. Yeah. You know, it's what KTM are doing on most of their bikes at the moment. Full electronic suite. Um, lean angle sensor, ABS, and traction control. Uh, and of course, you've got a track mode for this bike as well. Yeah. And with the track mode, you've got a launch control, which we might have had a play with today. And uh, you've got anti-wheelie. So, mm. it, and you, you can obviously, you can tailor, you, again, you can go in and you can tailor that on this, on this system. Um, I've had no instruction. It's super, super simple to use. Mm. Um, and it works incredibly well. You know, we've been on the airfield today and um, apart from one slightly embarrassing stall, <laughs> which meant I lost the race, um, it, it, it works really, really well. Uh, quick shifter. Again, there's been lots of talk about that and I uh, have suffered a little bit with uh, false neutrals today, but if you're positive with the, with, the, uh, with the changing, it doesn't really represent any problem. I really, really like that. I think that enhances the riding experience of almost any motorcycle, regardless of what sector it sits in. Um, I think it does a really good job. I think it's quite interesting, um, your impression coming off your sports bike onto this, which I think we should maybe just briefly touch on, is when you look at the competitors in the market, and of course the Street Triple is the benchmark, let's be honest, Triumph Street Triple, and then you've got Yamaha's MT-09, uh, you've got Kawasaki's Z900, but the Street Triple is effectively based on their Daytona. Mm. So the, 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 the kind of the general underpinnings of that bike is a sports bike, whereas with this, this is a little bit kind of supermoto and naked. It, it, it's got no kind of the, the, the underneath, what's hidden it's is been not different. sport bike. Yeah. So you, you, I don't think you, you would ever get that impression if you rode this bike, that there's some sort of lineage there that is attached to a sport bike because there isn't. No. And that's quite interesting too. But um, I guess that kind of leads us into talking about what we think is, is the kind of the best middleweight contender out there right now. When you talk about MT09, you talk about Street Triple, you talk about Z900. I've got to be honest, again, at, at this price point, everybody says, oh, the, the Street Triple, but Everybody buys a Street Triple RS, so that is the top spec bike, um, but it is so north of 10. It's north of 10. And so when you compare it to this, okay, it might have adjustable suspension, it makes a little bit more power, but, you know, fun for, for, for your, the pounds that you spend. I'm not sure there's a better mark, bike in the market than this one. Obviously, there's the, there's the sticker price, but there's also some really great deals out now for this bike. Yeah. I mean, I did see it uh, actually... Uh, you know, because obviously you get a bike you like, and of course you're, you're looking at the internet. How, <laughs> how much is it going to? How much is going to cost? I think I saw one deal, um, ninety-nine pound deposit and one hundred and thirty quid a month on PCP, like four thousand yeah. miles and uh, a year and yeah. four years or something. For me, that is ridiculously good value for yeah. for a, for a bike like this. Yeah, you, you're getting a huge amount of motorcycle, aren't you, for for what you're spending? Yeah, and I, and again, I think that's that's a really important point when you talk about what what is available, what you can choose from, that is a, that is a big part of the decision-making process, isn't it? What it's actually going to cost you. Yes. And how, how much enjoyment you're going to get out of the money that you're spending. And I, yes. I honestly, I mean, I've had a street triple. I've not had the, the new 765 variant. Okay. I have ridden that bike and I've got to say, it is a very impressive motorcycle. But for the money, I'm, I'm struggling to find something that's going to be better value than this thing. Really interesting. I'm sold. Good. Uh, styling, we should talk about styling. We Mark. definitely should, yeah. Well, when I first saw this bike, as I said, I really just I couldn't quite box it. You, you know, and that's, that's kind of how the bike rolls, really. Can, can you put it in a box? Maybe not. I have to say, I'm, I really like the styling now. I don't think it's pretty from every angle, I'll be honest. I think from the rear, it's, you know, it leaves something to be desired. I'd want to do something with this rear yeah. end, definitely. I think, I think that's... To, for me, is a little bit of an eyesore, um, and the mirrors. Um, you know, perhaps we'll talk about the mirrors, but the mirrors. Are, perhaps we shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> not that great, but from this front uh, three-quarter angle, I just think it looks mean. I think it looks really, really cool. I love it. I completely agree. I, I again, 
you know, we, we talk about the sort of the, the fundamental architecture of KTM's road bikes now, and you, you do get this really kind of sharp style yeah. nose and light section. I really, really like that. I've got to say, these are not the nicest things I've ever seen. I don't really understand why you need to put a rubber gator around a, um, a, a wing mirror. It doesn't make any sense to me. So that would be the first thing I'd change. And in quick succession, I would do exactly the same as you. There'd be a tail tidy going on this. I think the... the but they're, they're two easy additions, oh. you know. So, so first thing you do, you take these off, you put the little, um, you know, handlebar mirrors on, yeah. um, which are really easily accessible. I think you can find them on Amazon or eBay or something yeah, like that. It's, sure. it's dead straightforward. And you put a tail tidy on there and if me you know i'd probably put a um a seat cowl on it as well what? and then by that point you're done you know there's no need to change the exhaust the exhaust looks great sounds great you know what else would you need to do i, I don't I, think i love anything. this pipe I, I mean i know people have been making less complimentary noises about it because the original concept had a center exit exhaust sure. but of course they have to homologate it for the road that was what they came up with and i've got to say i think it looks fantastic i again would, would tail tidy or chop all this up um I changed the mirrors, but I, other than that, I love it. I really, really like, I really like the, the, the lines of the tank and the fairings. I think they look fantastic. I think it's, it is a really sharp suited bike. The proportions are great. Um, and it is super comfortable as well. We haven't spoken about that. You know, the seat's really good. I've probably done, crikey, three or four hours on it today over yeah. the course of what we've been up to. And I've had no issues. It's been easy to ride. Riding position is great. The only one other thing, of course, which is effectively what you would get with any naked bike, you've got very little wind protection mm. and you do get blown about a bit I don't I, you know it's it's not super turbulent air but you, you just have to expect that if you're going to ride this bike on a motorway at 70 miles an hour um you are going to get some buffeting aren't you? well I don't think this is the kind of bike that you're going you're going to go and do like a really long tour on it no. for me this is about short blasts this is about commuting this is about having as much fun in a short space of time uh, as as you can have that's the type of bike for me that this is yeah. if we if we're going to kind of we're going to wrap it up and, and come to conclusions you know i think we're completely in agreement here what a great bike what a fun bike mm. what an intoxicating bike you know so so easy to ride more than enough power in my yeah. opinion for the road more than enough power loads of torque instant grunts when you wind on the throttle it just goes quick shifter just, it is just huge fun that's that's the thing i would take away from riding this bike today just a barrel of laughs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so look, that has been our review of the KTM 790 Duke. I'm just a massive fan. I think you are as well, Mark. I couldn't agree more. What a great bike. If, you, if you're in the market for a middleweight, you want a load of fun, massive bang for your buck, you, you shouldn't look further than this KTM. Sure. Totally agree. And I, I, I couldn't be more enthusiastic about it. And, you know, likewise, really enjoyed shooting with it. I've really enjoyed putting this together. I think yeah. it's been so much fun, actually. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, I really hope you've enjoyed this review. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe. Please like. Please leave us a comment. And uh, we will see you next time.